gravity is stupid weak, like really weak, and we don't know why. There are four forces of nature, strong nuclear, weak nuclear, electromagnetism, and gravity. And, and we have different ways of measuring the strengths of these forces. It's a little bit of a fuzzy definition because uh, different forces can operate differently in different contexts. Like, like the, sh the strong nuclear force is super, super strong at atomic scales or nuclear scales, uh, but uh, all the way from over here, just uh, you know, not very far away at all, I don't feel the strong force at all, so it's like zero strength because it's, it's such short range. But one way is to examine the, the coupling constants. These are the, uh, when the force is operating, how strongly does it connect or couple to, to itself or other particles or whatever is behaving in an interaction. And when we do that, we get some sense of the weakness of gravity. You have strong nuclear up here, absolutely strongest force has it's just super strong, all right? The next weakest is electromagnetism, which is itself only a few percent of the strength of the strong nuclear force. Next, you have way down, distant third down here, is the weak nuclear force, which is about a million times weaker than the strong nuclear force. And then you take all these, and you put them up here, and then gravity is like, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Gravity is a thousand billion 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 times weaker than the strong nuclear force. That means if gravity were a billion times stronger than it is, it would still be the weakest force. If it was a billion billion times stronger than it is, it would still be the weakest force. Gravity is by far the weakest force. Think about this. Think, uh, you know, pick up something. Look, look, the muscles in my arm are all it takes to counteract the entire gravitational might of our planet Earth. There's a whole planet sitting underneath me, pulling with all of its gravity, and I can beat it just by doing this. That is insane. Gravity is weak, and gravity is weird. Let me frame this a different way. Let, let's ignore the strong nuclear force and electromagnetism for now. Let's, let's look at the competition between the weak nuclear force and gravity. A uh, one way to compare these is to, to assign some sort of mass scale to their strengths. I know it sounds a little bit weird, but, but follow me here. We can ask, what is the smallest possible black hole? It turns out the, the smallest possible black hole you make is known as the Planck mass. And the Planck mass is just a measure of, of the, basically the strength of gravity. It's around 10 to the minus 8 kilograms. It's pretty small. You can't have a black hole smaller than that. Now, if gravity were stronger, you can make smaller black holes because it would be easier. You could get, uh, get less stuff together. You could have uh, 10 to the minus 10 kilograms together and gravity would be strong enough to crunch it down into a black hole. But because gravity is so weak, you need at least 10 to the minus 8 kilograms of stuff in order to fashion a black hole. Now, okay, so that's, that's one number. Here's another number. Uh, with the weak nuclear force, the masses of its force carriers, the weak nuclear force is carried by the W and Z bosons, and we know the mass of the W and Z bosons, and the masses of those particles are like 10 quadrillion times smaller than the Planck mass. That's insane, and that shows you, that's another measure of just how weak gravity is. The weak nuclear force is so much stronger than gravity, and this is one way to express it in terms of mass. Now, why am I framing it in terms of mass? Well, we don't know why gravity is as weak as it is. We, we simply have no clue. The, the explanation for the weakness of gravity lies outside of known physics. But we do know why the W and Z bosons have the masses that they do. We do. That's inside known physics. So by transforming this question, we can say, we can go from, well, we have no clue why gravity is so weak. But now we can ask, why is the weak nuclear force so strong? And the reason the W and Z bosons have the masses that they do is because of the Higgs boson. 
Higgs boson, super quick review. It's this particle or field, however you want to think about it, it doesn't matter, that permeates the entire universe. It talks to just about everybody. It interacts with just about everybody. And it's responsible for giving a lot of particles their masses, like the electron. The electron has the mass it does because of the way it connects to the Higgs boson. The W and Z bosons have the masses that they do because they talk to the Higgs boson in a different way. And different particles talk to the Higgs boson in different ways, and so you get different masses for these particles. The W and Z boson get their masses from their interaction with the Higgs, and their masses determine the strength of the weak nuclear force. If the masses of the W and Z bosons were different, we would have a different experience of the weak nuclear force. So we know why the weak nuclear force is the strength that it ha has the strength that it does, because we know the masses of the particles involved. We know the masses of the particles involved because we know they're connected to the Higgs. So if we know about the Higgs boson, we can work out why the weak nuclear force has the strength it does. And we can ask, why is it so much stronger than gravity? We flip the question around instead of saying, why is gravity so weak? Now we're gonna ask, why is the weak nuclear force, which is the next best force, why is it so strong? And it's strong because it's cheating. You heard that right. The weak nuclear force is a cheater. See, the Higgs boson has this really, really weird mass, 250 giga electron volts. It doesn't matter what these units are. It just has a mass, which makes it heavy, but not really heavy. And it makes it light, but not, you know, super light. It's just kind of there. It's kind of medium. But the Higgs boson shouldn't have that mass. It shouldn't. Based on our understanding of, of quantum fields and quantum interactions, the Higgs boson, because it talks to so many other particles, it talks to electrons, it talks to quarks, it talks to W and Z bosons, it talks to photons, it talks to everybody, almost everybody. It doesn't talk to, about to neutrinos, but that's a different episode. It talks to just about everybody. There are all these constant quantum mechanical interactions in, uh, that, that should either cancel each other out perfectly, like it talks to one particle and it talks to an antiparticle over here and then everything cancels out, which would make its mass zero or it talks to everybody and all these interactions itself inflate the value of the Higgs mass. So the Higgs boson should, by our understanding of physics, should either have a mass that's basically zero or a mass that is basically infinity, some super huge number. Instead, it has this medium value. And we don't know why it has this medium value. Why are things just balancing out just right where it talks to one particle and then another particle just enough to cancel it out but not quite and leave a little bit of mass behind? This is super weird. The balancing, the fine tuning of the Higgs boson mass is a major unsolved problem in physics. But with that Higgs boson mass, with that very, very specific mass, we get very specific W and Z bosons mass, W and Z bosons mass, which makes the weak nuclear force be strong. If the Higgs boson had a more natural value for its mass, the W and Z bosons would be a lot lighter. And if they were a lot lighter, the weak nuclear force would be a lot weaker. The weak nuclear force is cheating because the Higgs boson is doing something funny. So it's not necessarily a question of why is gravity so weak. It's a question of why is the weak nuclear force so strong? It's much stronger than it has any right to be. The only reason it's so strong is because it gets to talk to the Higgs and the Higgs is cheating and has a weird mass. And if you thought this was leading to some sort of satisfying conclusion of explaining why the weak nuclear force is the way it is because the Higgs boson has this finely tuned mass, at the end, I'm sorry, we don't know. We don't know why the Higgs boson has the mass it does. But we're interested in this angle of the question because this is sitting in known physics. We know about Higgs bosons. We know about interactions. We know about quantum field theory. So we might be able to answer the question about gravity over here, which we know nothing about quantum gravity. Well, okay, we know like this much about quantum gravity, but it's certainly not enough. Maybe we can just focus on the nature of the weak nuclear force in the Higgs boson and we'll come out to some sort of solution. Or maybe not.
maybe examining the nature of the Higgs boson isn't going to reveal itself, m reveal anything interesting. Maybe we're getting it all wrong. Maybe everything we know about the Planck mass and the coupling constants, maybe we're just off. Because these calculations, these numbers, these estimates of the strength and all that assume something. And they assume that we live in a four dimensional universe, one dimension of time and three spatial dimensions, you know, this way, this way, this way, that's our universe. And if you do all your calculations in this four dimensional space time, three dimensions of space, one of time, then you get all these numbers and you get this incredible weakness in gravity. But maybe there's more to the universe, you know, like, like string theory, proposes that there are a lot more dimensions to our universe, uh, 10, maybe 11 more spatial dimensions. But these dimensions are super, super tiny, super, super curled up at some incredibly small scale, so you don't observe them in normal life. Okay, so that doesn't really solve the problem because in normal life we still have to calculate all these numbers and we still have to explain why gravity is so weak. But one of those ideas from string theory might be useful, this idea of extra dimensions. And maybe, maybe some or all of these dimensions aren't as small as we might think they are. We need the dimensions, most of the dimensions in string theory to be small because if we, if the dimensions were larger, if these extra dimensions showed up and say they were like this big, we would have seen that by now. We would have seen electromagnetism. We would have seen weak nuclear, strong nuclear, atoms and chemistry. We would have seen all of that mess up. So we know that when it comes to those forces, if there are extra dimensions in the universe, it has to be super, super tiny. But we haven't tested gravity or strong gravity at those scales. We're not exactly sure how gravity operates on the very, very tiny scales, like a millimeter scale, like this big. Oh, we don't know how gravity works at those scales. It's, it's a very difficult measurement because you'd have to take like two atomic nuclei and ignoring all the other complicated interactions between them, of which there are a lot, and you would have to just measure their gravitational influence on each other. And gravity is super weak. Atomic nuclei are kind of tiny. And so this is a very difficult measurement. We actually haven't probed or studied the nature of gravity at these very small scales. So there's a window here, there's an opportunity. Maybe, just work with me here, there are extra dimensions to the universe. You know, two or more, I don't know, it doesn't matter. And maybe some of these are large. Now this is large in a microscopic sense, not large in a human sense. These dimensions, these extra dimensions are not the, on the scale of the solar system because we would have seen that by now. We're like, hey, I think we live in more than three dimensions here. Uh, this is something on the scale of a millimeter, which is big when it comes to atomic physics. If there are some extra dimensions in our universe, maybe, maybe gravity works this way. All the other three forces, they only operate in our normal three dimensions. We know this because we've tested it. Maybe gravity uh, uh, works through all the dimensions. Like if you add a couple extra spatial dimensions, now we have five dimensions of space and one of time, maybe gravity operates across all five dimensions and it gets diluted. Maybe it's as strong as everybody else but it gets diluted because it can't just propagate in our normal three dimensions. It, it leaks out into the extra dimensions where it's effectively lost. Where, so gravity is strong, but just misguided. And it gets thinned out. And so in our three dimensional experience, we're like, look at this super weak gravity. But really gravity is saying, no, I'm really, really strong. It's just, I've got a lot on my plate. I have to put gravity in your three dimensions and I have to put gravity in these extra dimensions and that's just spreading me thin, okay? So cut me some slack. Maybe that's how gravity operates. Now, why would the universe have these extra dimensions? Uh, no explanation. Why would gravity work in these extra dimensions and not the other uh, forces? We have no explanation, but it's an idea and it's an idea worth testing. And we have attempted to test the existence of extra dimensions. There are a couple routes. One is exactly what I described before, which is to take two very, very, very small things, put them really close to each other and try to measure their gravitational interaction subtracting out all the other complicated interactions that they normally take part in. Those have revealed so far 
no evidence for extra dimensions. And, and that's kind of a bummer, but that's just the way it is. Although we haven't tested that very, that very well. The other way to test this is to turn on our particle colliders, which are uh, making lots of high energy physics at very, very small scales, and see if anything funky is happening. See if we're, there are uh, motions or, or products that there's missing momentum or missing energy that would be a sign that the gravitational interaction between these objects that are colliding or exploding or doing whatever is, is leaking into an extra dimension. And so we're not seeing it in our normal dimension. Again, though, those searches have come up empty as well. Another way is to, is to try to make black holes. You know, general relativity, uh, uh, the Planck mass, all that, what is the smallest possible pl black hole you can make is 10 to the minus eight kilograms. If gravity were actually stronger on small scales, then when we turn on our particle colliders, that would mean you don't need as much stuff in order to fashion a black hole. Maybe you can take a couple atomic nuclei and smash them together, and you can make a very, very tiny black hole. This is what caused a lot of worry back in when the Large Hadron Collider first turned on, that, oh no, we might turn on black holes. No, these things are microscopic. They would evaporate right away. They would basically act like little particles. We're not, there's nothing to worry about, but if we saw the formation of black holes in the Large Hadron Collider, that would tell us that gravity is stronger than we think it is because it, well, you could make a small a black hole out of less stuff. But we haven't seen any black holes in the Large Hadron Collider. We haven't seen any violations of the R squared, a normal Newtonian gravity when you make really, really small things and put them together. We've seen no evidence for large extra dimensions. So like I said at the beginning of this episode, why is gravity so weak? We don't know. Hope you enjoyed it. Please go to patreon.com slash pmstutter. No, your contributions will not go to solving why gravity is so weak, but it will go to making this show happen. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next week.